In life, no charge to gospel of Christ 
May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. I now place a copy of sacred scripture on his mortal remains. In baptism, Noel received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. During the course of Noel's life, he would have made the sign of the cross on numerous occasions during his life. Lord, in our grief we turn to you. Are you not the God of love who opens your ears to all? Listen to our prayers today for your servant, Noel O'Brien, whom you have called out of this world. Lead him to your kingdom of light and peace, and count him among your saints in glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. I invite you all to sit down now, please. And those of you who are standing, there are seats there in the centre. If you wish to take them, please feel free to do so. Uh, you might feel more comfortable. So good morning, everybody. And uh, we gather here today to bid farewell to Noel O'Brien to celebrate his funeral liturgy. And when we say celebrate, we mean to celebrate his life. He got it here in a positive way today, despite the fact that we're also uh, in sorrow. His family are very upset, of course, naturally, at his passing. But your uh, attendance here today is a sign of hope and also comfort to them. Now, as I said, we're going to celebrate his life. So I'm going to invite Fiona, his daughter, to come forward here to uh, the Ambo to narrate the various symbols which the family have chosen to present, to represent Noel's life. Noel's daughter-in-law, Amy, is bringing forth two treasured family photographs, one of Noel's parents and siblings, and the other of Noel and Carmel with their own children. Noel dedicated his life to ensuring the happiness and well-being of his family, and every thought and deed was undertaken with them in mind. Mam's sister, Mary, brings the O'Brien and Hogan family crests, representing Noel and Carmel's devotion to each other. She has witnessed the 45 years of marriage they spent together, and their love only grew deeper as the years went by. Son-in-law, Alan, brings forth the keys of Dad's 04KE Citroen Bilingo van. Dad was happier in that van than any proud new car owner, and it was his faithful companion as he went contentedly around his daily business for the shop and saluted everyone he met along the way. Son Cormac presents a glass fruit bowl Noel won for sprinting in his younger years. It represents his love for a variety of different sports throughout his life. It has been a permanent fixture in the family home for decades. 
Noel began to play what he modestly referred to as bad golf in his later years, and the odd golf ball would often take its place amongst the fruit on the kitchen table. Some have miraculously found their way back into it today. Dermot brings forth a photo of the square in Kilcock from the 1980s. It shows Connolly's grocery and hardware, as well as the chocolate box shop across the road. Dad spent many happy years working in both businesses, and the people of Kilcock were a source of great joy to Dad as they came to chat with him as much as buy their daily paper. Sister-in-law May O'Brien presents a junior Meath jersey belonging to one of Noel's grandchildren. Noel was a proud Meath man, especially where the GEA is concerned, and many happy and proud de days were spent playing in Kilcloon and spectating in Park Charlton and Crow Park. Finally, daughter-in-law Rosalind brings forward a photo collage of Noel's seven precious grandchildren. Each one that came along in turn was religiously referred to as the grandest little child, and they worshipped him as much as he did them. Just before we begin our Mass, uh, I would like to extend our sympathies on behalf of the parish priest, Father Declan Kelly, who is away at the moment. Uh, so I extend it on his behalf and on my own behalf personally to uh, Noel's family, and indeed on behalf of the old entire parish of Kilcloon, Battlestown and Kilcock. So I extend my sympathies, obviously, first of all, to uh, Noel's beloved wife, Carmel, to his children, Fiona, Cormac, and Dermot, to uh, daughter-in-law, Roslyn and Amy, son-in-law, Alan, uh, grandchildren, Adam, Julia, Ollie, Aidan, George, Emily, and Harry, to brothers, Getzer and John, to brother-in-law Richard and sister-in-law Mary and the extended family. Our sympathies go out to you at this time. So we will begin our Mass then in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all to prepare ourselves for this celebration, as I said at the beginning, it's a celebration of Noah's life, and it's also a celebration of the Eucharist. So you can say it's a celebration of the life of Noel, but also a celebration of the life of Jesus Christ. We begin by asking for God's mercy and forgiveness in our own lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy, 
Let us pray. O oh God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give we pray to your servant Noel, for whom today we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, he may come before you face through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Now, the family have chosen the two readings from sacred scripture. So I invite Dermot, his son, and his daughter-in-law, Rosalind, to come forward and proclaim the word of God for us now today. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he dies before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honorable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding, this is man's gray hairs. Untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding or treachery seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade, and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life, his soul being pleasing to the Lord. He has taken him quickly from the weakness around him, yet people look on uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protect, protecting his holy ones. This is the word of the Lord. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. If you pass through raging waters in the sea you shall not drown if you walk amid the burning flames you shall A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord, so that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. As scripture said, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall, pass, shall praise God. 
It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by the angels, then he will take his seat on his throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him and he will be separate men one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come you whom my father has blessed, take your heritage, the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. Sick, and indeed in prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When do we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, insofar as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Next he would say to those on his left hand, go away from me with your curse upon you to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you never gave me food. I was thirsty and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you never made me welcome. Naked and he never clothed me, sick and in prison, and he never came to visit me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when do we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not come to help you? Then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, insofar as you neglect it to do this to one of the least of these, you elected to do it to me, and they will go away to eternal punishment and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. gospel which I chose there, I feel, is appropriate for the uh, farewell send-off for Noel O'Brien. The words of the gospel again. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was a stranger and you made me welcome. And we're told the virtuous will say, when did we see you hungry or a stranger? The key theme running through this gospel is a small word, love. It's interesting that today we're celebrating the feast of Valentine's Day. The saint if you like, symbolizing love. 
And without love, the word and the world would be a very bleak place. Hence, we should not be surprised to find that the love that occupies the central place in the gospel, but particularly in the one I've just read, Christ said to his followers, you will be recognized by the love you show to one another. And he even went further. He said, you will be judged on the one word, love. St. John of the Cross, one of the great doctors of the church, was also echoes the words of Christ when he says, in the evening of your life, you will be examined just on one thing, love. To those who are sensitive to the needs of others, life offers innumerable opportunities to practice the commandment of love. And Noel O'Brien did that on numerous occasions during his life. It is not a question of doing big things, nor is it a question of giving things away. Rather, it's a question of giving of oneself in little ways, giving of one's time, energy, and love. And that is what Noel did during his life, giving his time, his energy, and his love. Imagery love yearns for an immediate heroic act that is achieved quickly and seen by everybody. In other words, a very public event. Someone who wants to be seen doing something. However, real love requires hard work and patience. And patience is one of the virtues that would appear most outstanding in Noel O'Brien's life. And those actions of love often go unseen and indeed unrecognized. It is not a sporadic thing. It is a way of life. And that was the way of life for Noel O'Brien. Noel met Carmel in Ashbrook Tennis Club, and they married in 1977, 45 years married. He was a civil servant, as most of you probably know, working in the Department of Social Welfare. And when he retired 16 years ago, he devoted all his years ahead uh, to a shop. He loved a shop in Kilcock. And that dedication of work to that shop was a partnership between himself and his wife Carmel. That shop was open 364 days of the year and was open from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And no love to chat to the customers, have banter, and would often give credit to people, maybe when he shouldn't have given the credit for items when they didn't have money to pay. He was a typical old style shopkeeper. He could not refuse. He had great quality of showing tremendous respect for everyone. And he always wanted to work constantly, even taking on jobs, cutting grass, and doing extra bits and pieces, because he loved to be occupied in his retirement. Noel, too, was a great help, his brothers tell me, to their mother in her 
uh, latter years and her years of frailty. So Noel would have been very good helping there and helping her before she died. Noel played for Gilcloon GAA and would have had the peak times around 1970 to 1973. Noel also was a very good and committed athlete. He was a tremendous sprinter. And of course, in latter years, he loved his golf. And he didn't just go and play golf with the lads. He played golf with his wife, Carmel. People of the parish over the past number of days since Noel come down to his final uh, few days and uh, myself being involved with the family over the past week now, uh, people would ask me how he is and so on. And the one thing their response was always to me was that he was a gentleman to his fingertips. Everyone said that to me. Noel has two wonderful virtues. I've already mentioned one of them, that of patience, but also determination. Wonderful determination, even right to the very end. Because uh, last Monday, I was called from Nava to come down to anoint Noel, and we all kind of said maybe the next day, that was Tuesday, and little did we know he'd go all the way through Friday. And it was very appropriate that, despite the fact that all of us had spent so much time there, the family, especially around his bed, that in the last moments, he was uh, there just with Carmel, just for those split seconds as he passed from this life. Noel was selfless, and he was always, the question he would always ask was, what can I do for you? He would not hurt a fly, his family tells him, and indeed friends around the place have also said the same to me. Always there to help a person, that was the, his core value. And with a clear and logical mind, no matter what the problem was presented to him, either by a family member or friend, he would always say the same thing, that the kind thing must always be done. A very analytical mind, uh, particularly when it came to politics, a very interested in Red Sea polls and so on, and obviously trying to anticipate what the result of the next election will be. Carmel and the children uh, never, if you like, had a crossword with Noel or vice versa. And I think that's a very nice uh, comment and statement to make by a family, that there would never have been crosswords. Noel had total respect for life, and like the gospel, went out of his way to have pity on those less fortunate than himself. I feel over the last week I've come to know the family very well. Uh, Carmel, Fiona, Dermot and uh, Cormac. And I would have to say that Noel's children carry Noel's great qualities of love and respect and I hope they carry that into the future in their own lives, showing similar those respects and qualities to their children and children's children. Today, as I said, is Valentine's Day. And Carmel told me yesterday that they had a wonderful life together as husband and wife. They shared great memories and good memories. And it's a day where we say to each other, well, at least in partnership anyway, I love you. I'm sure that today uh, Noel is, wants to say that, send that greeting to Carmel today from his new house, his new home in heaven. I love you. And that love will always go, as, as you know, in marriage, for better or worse, till death do us part. But it goes beyond death because, please God, we will be reunited 
carved on himself later in life. To also just briefly comment on uh, his two brothers, Jester and John, who are very kind to me as well, and we spent a lot of time chatting around the bedside of uh, Noel over the past few days. I know um, you're all very um, upset and so on, but we have to be positive as well and reflect on the future. Noel has shown us love and has put it into practice in his life. And it's up, for, up to us to show each other that similar form of love and respect. To close one's heart is to begin to die. And today the symbol of Valentine's Day is a heart, love. We should never close that heart off to anyone. To refuse to love is to die another kind of death before one's physical death. To open one's heart always is, begin, is to begin to love. We know that we have passed and passed on this journey we've had Noel. But now we must move on and respect each other and show that big heart as he did to others. Those who love others have nothing to fear from that day of judgment, as we heard in the gospel today. When we show love to others, we're showing love to Jesus Christ. And Noel did that in spades during his life. May you rest in peace. Come now to the prayers of the faithful. I'm going to invite uh, Kieran Doyle, Adrian Whelan, Aidan Doyle, Edwina O'Brien, Roland Doyle, and Cyril O'Brien to come forward to read the prayers of the faithful for us. And maybe everybody else should stand now, please, for the prayers. Now we gather here as a Christian community to bring our prayers to God our Father for the needs of the community, the needs of Noel's family, and for our own personal needs. <clears throat> uh, we, pr <clears throat> we pray for our parish priest, Father Declan Kelly, and for our celebrant here today, Father Tony Galvin. We thank God for them and for their attendance to Noel and his family in recent difficult weeks. We ask him to bless them in their priestly ministry, especially when attending the sick and the dying. Lord, hear us. We pray for Noel and ask God to welcome him warmly to his heavenly home. May he richly reward his faith, generosity, and empathy for people, especially his devotion to those in his close and wider family. May God grant him the peace and happiness of heaven. Lord, hear us. We pray for the family and the friends of Noel. May the Lord Jesus, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for those who work with the sick and dying. We especially pray for all those who tended to know from Meat Palliative Care Team, his GP, the staff of St. Mark's Ward in the Hermitage Clinic, and the Irish Cancer Society Night Nurses. We thank God for their exceptional care and attention to Noel in the recent weeks. We ask him to continue to bless them in the work they do in providing peace and comfort to those in their care. Lord, hear us. 
We pray in thanksgiving for the neighbours and friends who have been so kind to Noel's family at this sad time. May God reward their kindness and bless their homes with happiness and peace. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who have died, remembering especially the relatives and friends of Noel that have gone before him, marked the sign of faith. We remember especially today his parents, Cyril and Annie Kate, sister Mary, brother Desi, and sister-in-law Patricia. We remember all those who mourn today and pray they will receive from God the strength to bear their grief and loss. Lord, hear us. We bring our prayers to Mary, the Mother of God, now as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers we make, we it with confidence and faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sit down now for the offertory of the Mass. I'm going to ask Richie Doyle and Johnny O'Brien to bring forward the gifts of bread and wine that are on the table at the back of the church. Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we this bread to offer, which earth is given and you in hands have made, it will come for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, my sacrifice and yours, May be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice and hands and pray unto glory's name for our good and Lord for all his church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Noel, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
in him the hope of the blessed resurrection had dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he took bread and giving thanks. He said the blessing, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We proclaim in song now the mystery of hate. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You have set Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by his death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the rest of the apostles and all the saints who will please you throughout the ages. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, which your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the older bishops, old clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Toward the heart of brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to your passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Praise the Father and the Lord Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace and grant peace in our days. That with the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of our sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of our sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Sorry, I need the assistance with the Eucharist minister, please. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. <coughs> Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, of worthy that should enter from the roof, when he said the word of my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us all safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. <clears throat> oh, 
fields and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and see the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my Now we have a community reflection, reflection after it wrote the end of our Dev Street. So I'm going to ask Anne Hogan to come forward to uh, read the reflection for us. Gone from my sight. I am standing upon the seashore. A ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength, and I stand and watch her until she hangs like a speck of white cloud just where the sea and sky come down to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there she goes, gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large in mast and hull and spar as when she was when she left my side. And just as able to bear her load of living freight to the place of destination. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at that moment, when someone at my side says, there she goes, there are other eyes that are watching for her coming, and other voices ready to take up the glad shout, here she comes.
going to ask uh, Fiona O'Brien now just to offer a few words of thanks on behalf of the family. Um, just behalf of uh, my mom and brothers, I'd like to express our appreciation to those around us without whom we couldn't have managed over the past weeks and days. To all of you who came from near and far to pray for Noel and sympathise with us at our home yesterday, it really meant a lot to us. Thank you. To those of you who gather with us today to support us in our darkest hour, and also those who assisted with readings and gifts, and to Maria for the beautiful music, thank you. And for those tuning in online or who couldn't make it, thanks for being with us in spirit. To William Ryan and Sons funeral directors who guided us through this process from beginning to end and made everything so much easier. To the people who kept Dad company and assisted with his care in the last few weeks, in particular his brothers Jetzer and Johnny and brother-in-law Richard Doyle. Like the faithful brothers and friends you are, you attended at all hours of the day and night. Dad loved seeing you coming and nothing was too much trouble. To Jesser for thinking of pretty much every job that needed to be done and then actually going and doing it. Thank you. To Dad's good friend Caroline Noonan for the lend of the reclining riser chair or what the grandchildren now fondly refer to as the magic chair. What a kind and practical gift for an old friend in their hour of need. Thank you. To May O'Brien, <coughs> Siobhan Langton and Siobhan O'Brien for keeping us fed and watered, not just yesterday, but during the 10 days we had Dad home, and for the countless other jobs you did. Thank you. To all the people who delivered kind gifts of food to our house, we will be eating well for the next few weeks. To Dad's nephews who gave freely of their carpentry, plumbing and electrician skills, not to mention their valuable time, to accommodate various adjustments needed as Dad came home. Thank you. To my mom's sister, Teresa, who can't be here today, but is a constant support to my mom, and who, along with Johnny, helped us keep the chocolate box on its feet during the past few difficult months, and to her sister, Mary, who has been such a support to us at home. Thank you. To mom's niece, nurse Anne Hogan, who provided such professional guidance and support to mom on the daunting prospect of palliative home care. Thank you. To May Madden, again, and her sister Kay, for painting Dad's room at little more than a moment's notice and readying it for his return from hospital. And to their sister-in-law, Veronica Madden, who assisted in so many ways, tending to Dad, preparing the beautiful flower arrangements and wreaths you see before you here today, performing the ministry of the Eucharist, as well as regularly dropping us in one of her legendary quiches. Thank you. To Blackhall Gales GAA and the lads who assisted with the traffic management at our house yesterday. And to Joan and Ray Brady for providing parking for visitors. Thank you. Community is everything and in times of need, neighbours and the GAA always come up trumps. Dad would have been humbled by your planning and sacrifice on a cold, wet February night. But again, nothing was too much to ask. In fact, we didn't even have to ask. Thank you. <clears throat> To Father Declan, who visited Dad during his illness, and Father Tony, who has been so good to us this past week, calling in to see Dad, praying with us, helping us to plan today's funeral mass, and for your reassuring and calming company. We looked forward to your daily visits, chats, support, and prayers. Sincerely, thank you. To our neighbour, David Brophy, for saving today, serving today's mass with his usual decorum and professionalism. We are most grateful. Thank you. To Mary McCarthy for the generous loan of her precious family churchware for use with Dad at home. Thank you. I am sure I have forgotten someone, but it is not intentional. To everyone who has helped in some way, no matter how big or small, for your kind words, stories about Dad, cards, messages, letters, prayers and visits, and things you did that we probably don't even know about yet. From the bottom of our hearts, we don't know how else to say it. Thank you.
we have waited Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorious body. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like yours. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Noel, who today has journeyed from this world now to heaven, may by this sacrifice be cleansed from, and freed from any sin and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. We just for the final prayers accommodation, just on behalf of the family, um, I thank all of you for being here today, a uh, large con congregation, uh, both today and uh, those of you who called to the house uh, yesterday of, uh, for the uh, wake. Uh, so on behalf of the family, I thank all of you for that. And um, I just say, uh, on my own behalf, just I thank Fiona for all her assistance in preparation in preparing our literature today. And uh, thank you for your kind words. Um, as I said, I wish you and your family well in the weeks and months ahead. And uh, from around this area again, I promise I'll call to your mum. Um, and uh, that would be important for me uh, because, um, you know, uh, she's lost, um, if you like, half her heart today. But um, we don't say goodbye. Um, Noel will be with you, um, and Carmel, and she, it's, not, it's not the end of the road, please. And to, to be confident, to reflect on the fact that you're a wonderful family around you, to care for you as well, and very good neighbours and friends here in this parish. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our friend, Noel. May our faith farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again with the love of Christ, which conquers all things and destroys even death itself. I'm going to sprinkle uh, Noel's mortal remains with um, holy water, reminding us of his baptism 75 years ago, and for that period of time, during the course of his life, his body was a temple of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Then, of course, with incense, the mortal remains as well, just to remind us that the Christian body, the body of Christ, is meant to be something to be sacrificed, not sacrificed, but upheld and treated with great respect.
your response is receive a soul and present it to God the Most High. Receive a soul and present it to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May the angels lead you into the arms of Abraham. Eternal rest granted to him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our friend Noel O'Brien in the sure and hope that together we will all, who have died in Christ, we will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Noel in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of prayer and faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Noel forever. Amen. In peace now, let us take Noel to his place of rest. Noel, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to help you and take you to the holy city new and eternal Jerusalem.
Dear friends, our friend Noel has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him now with our prayers. Let us praise the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with Noel. Together may we meet Christ Jesus, and he who is our life appears in glory. From the letter of Paul to the Philippians, our true home is in heaven, and Jesus Christ, whose return we long for, will come from heaven to save us. The word of the Lord. O God, by whose mercy the faithful departed find rest, we ask you to bless this grave, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And send your holy angel to watch over it. As we bury here now the body of Noel O'Brien, deliver his soul from the bond of sin, that he may rejoice in you and with your saints forever. Amen. Because God has chosen to call Noel from this life to himself, we now commit his body to the earth. We place in some soil there. Thanks, Mike. Dear friends and reverends, let us praise God, the source of all mercies. You raise the dead to life, give. Now, uh, Noel O'Brien, eternal life, we pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress, 
draw near to us who mourn today for no dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Noel. Give our faith in your consolation and eternal life, our hope. We pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy. We pray for all who are buried in this cemetery. May their suffering be lessened. May their joy be increased. May the light of glory shine on them, and may they rest in peace. Lord of mercy. With confidence in the words Jesus gave us, we praise the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Loving God, from whom all life proceeds, and by whose hand the dead are raised again. Though we are sinners, we wish always to hear you. We want you to hear us. Accept the prayers we offer in sadness today for your servant Noel. Deliver a soul from death, number him among your saints, and clothe him with your robe of salvation to enjoy forever the delights of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and say to their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. Today do we cry by the children of Eve, to you be sent of our sides, morning weeping this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes and mercy towards us, and after this our exile shall to us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O Clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, the Holy Mother of God. May the prayers of Mary, the Mother of God, who stood by the cross her son was dying, Help those who mourn today for Noel, and accompany all of us in our time of need. Eternal rest granted to him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May they rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, Cormac. Uh, no son uh, to uh, say a few words uh, to us now. Yes. In close, in close, here, okay. Uh, firstly, a huge thank you to everybody uh, attending today. I presume you can hear me, it is quite windy. Thanks. Um, just a huge thanks, obviously, to, to my sister Fiona and brother Dermot uh, in helping me um, prepare this. Uh, Fiona is the articulate one amongst us, so uh, many of these are her thoughts, as you're so good inside the church. Um, Noel O'Brien, obviously we were, we were mad about him and the job of uh, giving a eulogy is, is not something anybody ever relishes but uh, in doing that it's a great opportunity to, to tell the world about uh, our dad on behalf of my mom, my sister, my brother and all our extended family. Um, the only problem is that I could never do him justice. Can you hear me? Uh, I know most people think their dad or husband is the best one in the world, and we're no different. Of course, dad wouldn't describe himself as anything special. Uh, as Christy Moore would say, I'm an ordinary man, nothing special, nothing grand. But dad was a man of stark contrast. Ordinary, yes, but also completely extraordinary. Uh, definitely not grand, but special, uh, we think so. He was the eldest of five children, uh, four boys, one girl and things were tough on their county meat farm, all hands on deck, as he'd say himself. Uh, they had plenty of 
great memories in the farm and we're only too delighted that the local football field, GA field, was uh, across the road from where Arm play, our home play stands now. Uh, many a um, match was played there with Jetzer, with Desi, with Johnny, being physical and tough and the odd time they threw a football into the mix as well. Um, the story goes that there was a match on and uh, the field across from the farm it was about to start but there was no sign of the wing-back Noel O'Brien. Uh, no doubt he was probably tied up in the farm. Um, seconds before the match started like a bat out of hell, he burst through the hedge, fully talked out and took his place ready to go. Uh, we, ne we, we never found out if they won that day um, despite his questionable pre-match preparation. His love of uh, Gaelic football was passed on to us and we've had many happy memories of trips to Crow Park uh, in the last day, 30 years and to Park Talton too. Um, Dad was exceptionally determined and hard working, an, e an ethic he probably inherited from his parents. He was offered a scholarship to secondary school in, in Lansdowne as there was none available locally at the time and accepted it despite the uh, long commute in the early 60s. His uh, daily trip involved a cycle of five miles and two buses just to get to school, probably after some farm work too. And of, um, and of course, he'd probably no problem in doing this and never complained. It was in Ashbrook Tennis Club in Ratmines one night, almost 50 years ago, that everything changed for Noel O'Brien. He was in attendance at a dance with a young Patsy Callanan, I think, I see here today, diligently planning the local dinner dance. A brunette Dublin-based uh, Tipperary teacher was out for a similar night socialising and caught his attention across a crowded room and the rest, they say, is history. It's difficult to imagine a more perfect match. They created a happy and caring family home where we never wanted for anything and taught us the meaning of love by their actions and deeds. It is a testament to their marriage that they were able to work successfully together for the past 26 years in the chocolate box and never fell out. Their relationship was a wonderful example of love and companionship. They would spend hours chatting on the couch every evening, telling stories, drawing up plans or making decisions. They were the ultimate partnership. Both had their own strengths and had the deepest respect for each other and were a formidable team who always backed each other without question. Neither of them were the boss in the relationship, or so ma'am would have you believe. Coincidentally, Valentine's Day was one of the most important days of the year, but not for the reason you're probably thinking. The number of cards, chocolates and teddies he'd sell in the chocolate box would always bring a smile to both their faces. And they'd celebrate with a rather la large glass of wine together that evening, and not a soppy card in sight. In all seriousness, my parents didn't really celebrate this day. They were old style. For example, Dad would make Mam tea and toast and serve it to her each morning. Um, and that was how he showed his affection. As the beautiful South song goes, he let love speak up itself. Dad was very fond, as anybody knows him, of the tea, to put it mildly. Even the nurses in the hospital recently remarked to us, he never refuses a cup of tea, does he? He used to drive his sister Mary mad when they were young and heading out for the evening. Just before they were due to leave, Dad would announce that they should all sit down for a cup of tea before they go. And Mary would be anxiously inching, inching him towards the door. He also reported to wake his mother up on returning from these nights out to inquire if she wanted a cup of tea. We can't imagine these were well received at various hours in the morning, but the thought was there. The regular couple punctuated the day and he enjoyed the chats and stories around it. Anyone who knew Dad knows that his life revolved around two things, family and work. These two things were always inextricably linked and he worked to serve his family. He worked for over 30 years in the civil service and former colleagues described him as a gentleman to work for and with. He was generous with his time, always listened and gave sound advice and was an encouraging and supportive mentor. He was a committed and conscientious civil servant as well as a wonderful colleague and friend. Dad, he spent 35 years um, as a retailer in Kilcock as his so-called second job in the evenings and weekends. We often marvelled how he got his energy. For a good period of his life, he worked from, say, 8 in the morning till 10 at night between the jobs and had one lovely day off a year at Christmas Day. You might think that we never saw him, but quite the opposite. Most of our fondest childhood memories are from working and playing in both Connolly's and Kilcock and the chocolate box storerooms from a very young age. These were the days before health and safety laws prohibited children from operating the bacon slicer. We cherished growing up in a business along with our cousins and neighbours, and every day was an adventure. In recent years, my mother convinced him somehow to start closing the shop earlier, and we got him back to 6pm. However, he couldn't conceive the idea of sitting down to relax at 6. He would end up using the evenings to chop logs. He would fix chainsaws, cut the grass, He'd meet up with his 
great brother and friend Jetzer and they draw up their latest scheme, master plan. Going to the wholesalers was also on the list, or coming up and do jobs in our houses. It was nigh on impossible to get the man to sit down and relax. There was always something on the go. It's been lovely to hear stories from visitors and compliments of Dad's decent nature. My mother described him as not having a selfish bone in his body, and he was frugal with himself, but so generous to those around him. He taught himself as neither um, above nor below anybody else. He was a take-me-as-I-am kind of person. New cars or flashy clothes were not a priority in our house. As you know, he loved driving around in the trusty van, and he couldn't have cared less about the opinion of others. As you, some of you may know, he took up golf in his latter years, but he abhorred the traditional snobbery or elitism that is associated with the sport. He was in it for the fun, the challenge, and the time spent with Mam and his family. On one occasion, he was stopped on the entrance of the golf club by security, who wanted to know if he was making some kind of delivery. Not at all, he says. I'm going playing golf. In recent days, we've racked our brains to think of what things he did just for himself during his life, and they're exceptionally few and far between. He got his joy from making others happy and never judged others for their words or deeds. If anyone did him wrong, he was quick to forgive, saying something like, Ah, the poor old devil, he had it hard himself. He was articulate when needed, knowledgeable, clear thinker, would take time to consider a challenge or situation and give reasoned, intelligent advice. He was quiet by nature, but when he spoke, people listened. We loved his empathy and regard for others. We can't recall him complaining about his own problems, a long day's work, or even his recent illness. Grumbling never solved anything, he thought, but he was always sensitive to the needs of others. I recall travelling home from the shop in the van with him one day, and it was so packed, I barely squeezed in no side. No seatbelt was needed, he said. We came across a local girl hitchhiking. He felt awful, he had no room for her, and stopped 50 yards down the road past her, and insisted I walk out, go back to her and apologise, he had no room for her in the van. I remember the mortification as I watched her hopes rise and fall at the chance of a lift, but, but Dad couldn't but acknowledge her. This kind nature extended to his family business where he regularly helped those, those, those in need with a personal service or gave credit to those who had forgotten wallets or purposes, or even those who had claimed it. He always wanted to help people. Perhaps this, spent, this comes from his modest upbringing, where if you had little, but you shared what you had. We recalled one story on returning from school in Dublin one day where he usually bought an apple at a local fruit stall. Upon passing the stall, the lady held out the apple for him where he had to decline as he had no money. She insisted he take it anyway, much to his delight as he was probably hungry. And I'm sure he wouldn't forget such decency and I can imagine we returned to our stall regularly to pay her back. Um, this deed was typical of the generosity and decency with which he ran his business. He'd never have survived working for a big retail organisation. He prided himself on being the corner man and had time for everybody. If this involved taking time to give detailed directions to a stranger or phoning a taxi to take someone home, then he did it. There was even a lovely story on uh, Facebook of a Kakak native expressing sympathy for him even though she didn't know him. However, she said when she became sick outside the chocolate box, mum and dad took her in and even dropped her home. He was modest, unassuming and humble, but nothing if not determined, and it was a rare occasion he'd let anything get the better of him. His persistence in the face of adversity is evident in his refusal to take the advice of Leo Varadkar and Cocoon during the COVID lockdown. The shop never closed a single day during the time. Despite her advice to the contrary, he often would take on would-be robbers in the chocolate box and send them sprinting down the street in shock as a 70-year-old man chased after them and telling them, you'll get no money here, as we tell us afterwards, it's too hard earned for that. We'll be forever proud that Noel was our dad, our husband, her brother, uncle, neighbour, friend. We're very proud of the courage which he faced his recent illness. He was ready for battle and he fought doggedly when God, but when God wants you, he wants you. They broke the mould when they made Noel O'Brien and Dad. We'll be telling stories about you for a long time to come. Your influence will continue to strongly guide us on our own path in life in diff times of difficulty. And we'll always ask ourselves, what would Dad do? We hope you've arrived safely to your heavenly home. It's time to sit back, put the feet up, enjoy the eternal reward, stick on the golf bed, put on Sky Sports, and most importantly of all, don't forget, them to tell, don't forget to tell them exactly how you like your cup of tea. Thank you, everybody, for your, for your time.